how you doing? How's it going? It's podcast time. I hope you're good. I'm good. I don't know about this Will guy over here. I am okay. And that's <laughs> that's the, all. That's, that's all I got. Most, I'm good. Hello, everyone. That's the most we can accept. Yes, I, that is acceptable. Or expect. Yes. Uh, I I had an issue today. I went to oh, Starbucks. Oh no! Oh no! This is issue number one. I went to Starbucks. You went to it was Starbucks. early in the morning. That's uh, issue number two. I wanted to get egg bites. Okay. I wanted the bacon egg bites. Uh huh. And the the pepper egg bites. Okay. They come in pairs. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. So I go up and I say, "I'll take the bacon egg bites and the pepper egg bites." And the okay. guy goes, "You want one of each?" Yes. And I said, I want four. Because I want, they come in pairs. Okay. He okay. said, you want one of each. I'm following you now. I'm following and you I now. And I said, I want four. And then <laughs> Hannah goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was basically who's on first for right. like a good solid minute of yeah. the guy like, so you want eight? And I'm like, no, I want two of the bacon ones and mm. two of the pepper ones. Yes. And he goes, okay, but they come in pairs. I was like, I know they come in <laughs> pairs. I want a total of four. Right. Eventually we got there. See, this is why you order from the app. Am I wrong? Okay, so we I always order from yes. the app. I made a grave mistake yes. by going there. I learned, however, that if you try to do this shit at Duncan, mm. it doesn't work because their food selection on the app never matches what's actually in the restaurant oh yeah like, like the donuts the donut like, like, like there's the never donuts, a donut the muffins a lot of like the yeah. the sandwiches that they have because you have a teacher walking in at freaking seven o'clock yeah. in the morning and going give me all of just the chocolates <laughs> <laughs> but like i'll be on the app and i'll want like you know a chocolate frosted donut and i and i don't see it in the app but i can see it right in the store mm -hmm. right behind you tanya whatever your name is <laughs> working the counter you're lying to me I can see it. See, I'll give Starbucks credit because they mark off when they're out of stock. Of right. Something. Yeah, no. Starbucks legitimately has a better app experience. Yes. So. Born, born in Silicon Valley. Yes. Probably. Maybe. No, they're, uh, they're from Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. But they're like run like well, a that's tech like bro right company. By, like uh, fucking Microsoft and Nintendo. So that's yeah, like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, Washington is tech adjacent. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Of course. Anyway. Speaking of Microsoft and Nintendo, not a lot of Microsoft news today, but we got There's Nintendo news bit. today. There's a little bit. We got Nintendo news. We are going to talk about the Sony State of Play, I'm assuming. More importantly, we're yeah. going to talk about the Sonic Central. So I watched the State of Play before this. I watched it while I was doing the dishes. And then I watched it while I was eating. Yeah. And then I uh, looked at our show notes and I noticed it was all the way at the bottom. And I was like, you know what? It belongs there. It was <laughs> so that it wasn't put at the bottom on purpose. That was just like how I was like jotting them down, like the order as I was remembering them. Okay. So well, that's honestly, why it was there. I, I do think the Switch stuff is more important. Yeah. Uh, so much so, I think that's going to be my main video this week is talking Ooh. about all the Switch rumors Ooh. because I was going to do it on the Gotcha SP mod and uh -huh. I forgot to order a piece. <laughs> so I got to do a throwaway That's going to wait. Um, but we have the leaked hardware here with us oh. in the room. Oh, wow. So fancy. Really, it's just a bigger Switch. Yeah. That's all it that is. Looks it like, looks yeah. a little bigger. And this is the size of the Joy-Cons right here. Right. So This is what they'll be. How did you... Get the uh, measurements for this. Oh, I looked up the 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 leak. Yeah. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna put actual joy cons. Right, in there. right. Be very careful. They're very delicate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's CAD files circling around. I okay. couldn't find the actual CAD files, but I found somebody else who did 3D printed uh, a mock up of what the new switch is gonna look uh -huh. like. And I took that switch and I overlaid it over the old switch. Yeah. And I have files for the old switch already. So I just scaled it up. Okay. But I made sure that the old switches, uh, thumbstick and buttons will still fit. Got it. On the new switch, uh, the thumbstick and the buttons look like they might be very slightly bigger. Okay. Uh, and that it, makes sense. And and the uh, space between the buttons is a little wider. Yeah, I was thinking like, I mean, we don't have to get into it now, but like, at the very least, like the the analog sticks have to be different on the new yeah. switch. 
Yeah. It's interesting because everybody is using these Joy-Con style thumbsticks, right. even though everybody hates these thumbsticks. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see what. See, I would imagine gonna they were going to be like more like a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally or like those type of like analog big. sticks. Yeah, like, like actual analog sticks. They might be. Yeah. Um, before we do that, you want to talk about the PlayStation Plus games? Yes, because as part of the uh, PlayStation State of Play, they revealed the PlayStation Plus games for the week of o for the month of October, available on October first. And I don't remember if we talked about these or not. I don't think we did. Uh, but on October 1st, we will get WWE 2K24 for PS4 and PS5, the Dead Space remake for oh, PS5, and Doki Doki Woo! Literature Club Plus for PS4 and PS5. Is 2K24 a good game? I've heard it is a good game. Okay. Yes. I don't believe it. But... <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's hard because, like, you know, it's a yearly wrestling game. So how much mm -hmm. can you really do with it? But Very for true. for like the yearly wrestling games, this is one this is one of the better ones. Uh, and Dead Space, people liked the remake. Yeah, I've heard the yeah. remake is very good. I have not played it yet. I have played the original. The original is very good. And Doki Doki Literature Club is a what do you call them? It, uh, a, a visual novel. Yeah, a psychological horror experience per the description down here. Yeah, I feel like that gives it away. But yeah, uh, sure. There's a, there's a cool little <laughs> twist that everybody knows, and if you don't know, you should play it. Yep. Um, so that, those are your PlayStation Plus games um, for all tiers of PlayStation Plus starting in October. Uh, not included in that blog, but mentioned in the uh, state of play real quick. Uh, on For the PlayStation Plus premium subscription, so that's the really expensive one, uh, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane for the PlayStation 1 and Dino Ooh. Crisis for the PlayStation one have been added okay. and for the mid tier. So that's the extra and the premium uh, last of us. Part one is being added to the games catalog. So you need to, uh, you can't have the basic for those. You need correct. You, you, you need, need at least the extra one okay. to play last of us. And you need the premium to play the PlayStation one. Games. And if you have those, I think you also get to play the plucky squire, which just came out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we saw some news about the legacy of Kane. Yeah. Uh, well that, that's part of the state of play. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, anyway, also thank you to sloth for 10 months, big switch and use 10 for the prime. Now let's get right into this, uh, switch to Hullabaloo. hardware release. Yes. Uh, these are the leaked CAD files. These are pictures of the cat files yes. that, that um, have been circulating. Uh, it literally just looks like a switch. Yeah. The difference is that I think last week we reported that it had an 8.8 .8 inch screen. Yeah. Uh, so the whole thing is different because of that. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is bigger because of that. Uh, the Joy Cons have to be slightly bigger, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, the Joy Con are ever so slightly bigger. I'm talking so that the camera will stay on my. Oh, well, I better not talk. <laughs> uh, like that. Yeah. Very slightly bigger. Otherwise, it's the, it's the same Joy-Con. Uh, obviously, the screen will be ever so slightly bigger as well. Because this is, what, a 7-inch screen? We decided? Y yes. Yeah. So this is an 8.8 .8 inch. So, like, uh, like 1.8 inches bigger. I would imagine they wouldn't want to, like, mess with it too much. Not just because, you know, it's not broke, so don't fix it. But also to, like... People are expecting the next system to be the next Switch, not like a whole big reinvention I'm, of the honestly, console. I'm okay with it being relatively the same. I'm a yeah. little surprised it's this similar. I would expect the Joy-Cons to be a lot different, but this yeah. looks like they're pretty much the same, just bigger. Well, I mean, like being bigger definitely makes it a bit more ergonomic. I'm just surprised it's not more ergonomic. Like they're, yeah. the shape is the same. Yeah, so... After playing like PC handouts for a long time and then jumping back to the Nintendo Switch, uh, I did notice this like no ergonomics yeah. at all. It's like just a flat. Thing. Yeah. It's more ergonomic than it should be for being just a flat thing. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I feel like there's room there for, mm -hmm. for something. I kind of like how it's low profile. It's, it's very flat. Yeah. But it also helps that it's pretty light compared to some of these other massive PC handhelds. Yeah. Um. All of these uh, rumors or, or leaks are 
posted in, in a Reddit post from r slash gaming leaks and rumors. Um, we also reported that the Joy-Con will potentially be magnetic. Yes. And this seems to uh, show that. These are more, uh, I don't, this doesn't seem like a render. This seems like straight up like the hardware. Yeah. Um, They seem like they, there's like these little posts on the inside where it will magnetize in. Some people saw the CAD file renders. I'm trying to find, yeah, this yeah. one where it has like a little notch on the inside. Yeah. It looks like it might catch there okay. some, somehow to charge maybe, but uh, these little divots and everything will be uh, magnetic supposedly. Yeah. So it looks like it'll be able to to hold a decent amount. It like goes okay. pretty much physically inside yeah, yeah. the switch, which is interesting because that would mean that you couldn't use your old Joy Cons on them because those no. slide in. Yeah, I'd imagine it might be like a E situation, like the Wii U. You can use the old yeah. Wii Motes, but uh, you can use Joy Cons with a Switch Lite. Yeah, but yeah, it might be something similar. Hmm. Um, these are all just pictures of, yeah. of what it looks like. Another weird thing that we should bring up is uh this little guy right here on the bottom right there is an extra button yes this is under the home button there is another button that looks square like the share button some people are saying it is an additional share button for when you're holding the joy con you know right sideways when you're holding a singular joy con uh-huh. that doesn't make any sense to me yeah. Because uh, why would you have two share buttons and not two home buttons? The yeah. home button is way more important yeah, yeah. than the share button. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what that could be. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what does, what do other systems have that the Switch doesn't, you know? Yeah, I can't think of you anything. Got the you got start and select. Start select, D-pad, two analog sticks. Pretty much every controller has start and select uh, and home and, and share. The, yeah. the, the only difference, I guess, is like the dual sense controller has a touchpad and that counts yeah. as a different press. Right. But the touchpad also like that, that is essentially took the place of select. You yeah. Know? And I guess on the Xbox controller, uh, the, the Xbox button is the home button. Yeah. And there is no select button. Well, they changed it. It's now, um, what, what is it? It's menu and like window button. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. The Switch already has more buttons. Yeah. <laughs> so adding another button doesn't make much sense. Uh, I don't think it's a button to, like, dislodge the Joy-Con, because that would probably be on the back. I, and I don't think it's, like, um, like, a programmable button. You know? Like... That could be. But, like, why put it there? Most of these controllers now that come with programmable buttons, they put them on the back. Yeah. No, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, Torrance says keyboard. That could be cool. That could be. Jay yeah. Cannon says cast. So it can stream to Twitch and YouTube. Oh, no, that would be the share button. Yeah, that would be the share button. But that's interesting. Yeah. Because I've heard somebody else say that there could be potential to stream from your uh, Switch wirelessly to the dock. Right. Could have something to do with that. Yeah. Um. We have no word on this. There's no like yeah. rumors about this at all. We don't know what the dock looks like. That this is just pure conjecture. But um we have heard rumors of it having two screens. Yes. And we think that would be ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. that that seems like a really outlandish thing to to speculate. Yeah. But if the second screen is just your TV, that might make a little bit of sense. Yeah. It's a sub to Wolf Den button. Oh, okay. What else? Uh, you want to read through the thing? Sure. Uh, this is from Nintendo Life. Uh, oh boy, the Nintendo Switch 2 hype train has uh, well and truly called uh, at Station Rumorville because this is a potentially a rather big one, folks. A series of photos and mock-ups uh, has been posted via a Chinese forum and subsequently shared on Reddit and Family Boards, which, de- which details what appear to be either prototypes or mock-ups from the upcoming Switch successor. It's important to be absolutely clear on this one. There is no evidence that this is genuine. However, the design and the accompanying specs do seem to be reasonably realistic. Uh, the photos and mock-ups have been shared via social media from the likes of VGC's Andy Robinson, YouTuber Arrow. Uh, however, you can view the whole lot, including the photos, over on Reddit. Uh, and then you see the tweets from Andy Robinson and Arrow. 
Uh, the design appears to showcase a slightly larger, more rounded Joy-Con uh, with the right one sporting an additional button below the home button. The attachment rails are also different, suggesting that Nintendo has indeed adopted a magnetic mechanism for the new console. An additional USB slot can be spotted on the top side next to the audio jack, and a couple of interesting extra buttons and triggers can be seen on the back of the Joy-Con, as previously rumored. Uh, as for the specs, which can be viewed via Im uh, Imgur, uh, we're potentially looking at a 12 gigabytes of RAM, uh, HDMI 2.1 support, and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Tech, tech experts at Digital Foundry have also weighed in with a post on social media commenting on the leak's potential authenticity. They said that this is the most interesting slash plausible Switch 2 leaked image, uh, asking why someone would go, uh, uh, oh, I'm so excited, all the Switch 2 news, <laughs> asking why someone would go to the bother of faking a mainboard. However, Digital Foundry also noted uh, the small battery chamber in the unit, asking users to keep expectations in check when it comes to the console's handheld performance. Of Th course, if is... the photo is depicting an early prototype, that cert uh, then certain aspects may be subject to change. This is why I believe it. Because, yeah. uh, well, first of all, the first thing I saw were these CAD files, and it's just, it's just so, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? unexciting yeah that i believe it yeah <laughs> it's like so like vanilla yeah um what else uh the other thing is what digital foundry said uh why would you mock up a main board like yeah. that like uh and also this battery compartment this is this looks very similar to the original switch design mm -hmm. uh what tablet do you know has a battery that small None. None. Most, most so, of them take up the entire back. Yeah, so you would have to make a main board just for this, yeah. like, mock-up. And that, no, I, I I think that this is probably the real deal. Also, yeah. this, like, plastic is very much what, like, prototype stuff usually looks like. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this is pretty legit. And what they said about the uh, battery compartment being small, uh, yeah. It's definitely by like these standards, like today's standards. Yeah, that's small, especially looking at like PC handhelds and stuff. Those are pretty decently big too. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know Nintendo, they're always using last year's hardware with, and they underclock the hell out of it. So I'd imagine this thing's probably just not going to be that powerful. Yeah, it'll probably be more powerful than the Switch we have, but mm -hmm. it probably won't be that powerful compared to everything else that's out there right now. Yeah, and. I think it'll have a decent battery life because the first Switch, that was everybody's biggest criticism when the thing came out. Yeah. All the game outlets were reviewing it and they gave it poor review scores. A lot of the reason was because of the three-hour battery life because yeah. at the time, nobody could fathom having a battery so small that we would right. only get three hours out of it. Now, we're lucky to get 45 minutes out of a PC <laughs> handheld. So this seems plausible to, to me. Mm-hmm. But it's cool. It gives us a nice look on, uh, at the inside. This guy, yeah. Nintendo Deal, uh, labeled everything. You got the game connector. You got the uh, SOC. You got RAM. You got the speaker. You got the USB. -C. There's two USB C ports. By yes, the way. that was that's thing. interesting. One on the top and one on the bottom, which is awesome. Yes, um, it's awesome. However, I can definitely see Nintendo doing something weird, like. One of them is for charging and docking, and the other one is for like peripherals and stuff. Yeah, like one of them maybe all doesn't have all of the connections necessary. Because that's the problem with USB C. Like, you know, the form factor is standardized, but like what it does isn't, you know? Yeah. So to your point, uh, the bottom one has all of the pins there. Yeah. It has a lot of pins. So this might actually be like a pretty powerful USB C. Yeah. Top one, uh, I think they're on the bottom. So we don't actually know how, yeah, what it is, or 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 how many pins will be there. Uh, it's potential that there's only power, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll see. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be too upset about that because the only reason I like having two for these PC handhelds is because I usually am charging it. Yeah. So having another one is usually charging and then something else. So having one that's only charging wouldn't be that bad. It would be a little annoying because I'd like the versatility, but. It is what it is. Um, another thing I noticed, uh, the Joy-Con around the uh, edge of the thumbstick, uh, it's raised a little bit. So that's a little bit. 
Yeah. Got a little swoop. I'll show it on screen. Got a little swoop. That might be for ergonomics. Also, the the shoulder buttons go all the way out. Yeah. They go all the way down. And I saw another picture of the back. Um, yeah, look at how big those bumps are. In there. Yeah. They're huge. And then these buttons are probably the releases. Release it magnetically. It's like yeah. an electromagnet thing. Mm-hmm. So. And then it's got the same kickstand that the OLED switch has, so that's good. Um, yeah. What else did we talk about specs? You you mentioned specs. Yeah, 12, 12 gigabytes of RAM, HDMI 2.1, and uh, 256 gigs internal storage. Thank God for some internal storage. Yeah. It's still, like, not a lot at all. No. But Nintendo games are usually pretty small. Yeah. And, yeah, we've heard about 12 gigabytes of RAM, and it, it is what it is. Yeah. I wish it would be a little more, but uh, I'm sure it'll still be, like, a huge spec bump compared to the yeah. old Switch. Uh, somebody in the chat said uh, that the extra button could be a mic on and off. Oracle. Also, oh, it says mic maybe. on and off. That is true because it is. Uh, it does have a mic in it. Yeah. So that could be a thing. And the and the DualSense controller has a mic on and off on. Yeah. It, it defaults to on, which is insane. Um, what else? There was another one. Another good one in the chat. I do like the idea of it potentially being able to connect to, to the TV or the dock uh, yeah. wirelessly. I think that would be like a huge stretch. Um, again, I'm like totally cool with it being just like a mild spec bump. It's just not exciting. Uh, I is- mean, I wouldn't say mild spec bump. I think it does need to have like some substantially more power than... Like what the Switch One has. Mild spec bump was the wrong words. Yeah, I'm happy with it being not that different from the original Switch, like right. in design. Yeah, like I want it to be significantly mm-hmm. more powerful than the Switch. But uh, I like the way the Switch is. Yeah, uh, I'm cool with them just making it better. Yeah, making this thing that has worked for how many years now? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Eight years now. Somehow, eight years. Just making it a little better. Yeah. Uh, but. It's a little boring, and it's not that right. exciting. It's right. not that exciting to uh, just have a little bit of a spec bump. Well, I think just hearing the specs is one thing. Like, we would need to see, like, what it can do, you know? Because, like, when you look at, like, the spec sheet of, like, the PlayStation 5, like, yeah, it's, it's more than what the PlayStation 4 was. And then, like, to hear them talk about all of its features, like, that's when you start to get excited for what the new system can do. Not yeah. like Nintendo's going to sit there talking about ray tracing and like volumetric lighting and all that crap. No, but... they'll they'll just drop some games and yeah. they'll show you what the games look like. I don't know if the, like I don't know what the big tech demo is going to be. I don't, I don't know. know what the yeah. one's going to be that's going to make me like want this game uh, or want this system yeah. compared to everything else. I suspect that it will be backwards compatible because they have talked about that before, how they've wanted to to have their backwards compatibility figured yeah, out. Yeah, like, I feel like that's expected at this point. Yeah, it's, uh, it should be to the point where all of the games that I have digitally will just yeah. carry over. Not like every other one of their online yeah. systems that had a wacky like uh, eShop situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully everything will carry over smoothly hopefully you'll be able to have multiple consoles without it fucking up your account system yeah um otherwise holding this in my hand it doesn't feel like that different at all like it's it's a little bigger but it honestly feels the same when you're holding it like if i yeah. was if i blindfolded you and told you to hold this you would tell me it's a joy con you yeah. wouldn't tell me no, it's yeah, any different than the old yeah. joy con the buttons do look bigger on this uh, version that I have on screen, mm-hmm. uh, and the thumbstick hole looks huge. Uh, it could be like a regular old thumbstick, like yeah. what you were saying. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what the actual thumbstick looks like outside of these renders. They look big and flat. Uh, it could be like those Xbox style thumbsticks. Yeah. So we don't know. We'll have to see, and we'll have to see what they're going to do about drift. Maybe they'll do a whole effect situation. But again, we don't know. I just hope they stop using iPhone app for multiplayer chat. Well, supposedly they'll have a... Maybe that's the thing. They were like, yeah. we heard a lot of criticism about using the phone app, so we put a mic in it. That's like... They don't have to go that far. <laughs> I mean, they don't, but at the same time, like it's good that they are. You know, because yeah. like that... I feel like that would get more people playing multiplayer games. Or like using the Nintendo built 
voice chat app rather than having to go through third party stuff, you know? Because that's, you know, Nintendo's all about that. They yeah, they wanted use, to keep yeah. you within their little ecosystem. Yeah. At, because of their like terms of service and stuff, and they don't yeah. want like kids talking to to wackos, and I understand that. Yep. Uh, now you need two phones to chat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. Okay. I guess that's the whole thing, right? Yep. That's well, it. that's the whole thing for that particular Switch uh, Nintendo piece of hardware. Okay. Because now there's this mystery patent that appeared. Ooh. Nintendo has submitted a, myster- a mysterious new wireless device to the Federal Communications Commission uh, this weekend, and it isn't the Switch 2 console we're expecting to be revealed before next April. The CLO-001 model number doesn't reveal what it actually is, but it appears to be an entirely new product given the uh, 001 codes used on devices like the original Switch, which was HAC-001, or the DS NTR-001. Uh, it's tagged only as a wireless device and not a wireless game console or any kind of, uh, kind of controller like a Joy-Con. The basic diagram within the documents shows an outline of where the FCC label will be displayed in a depression area on the bottom of something uh, with a squarish footprint and rounded off corners. The document also show uh, that there is no body-worn accessory involved with testing uh, and, it, and, it, and that it... I'm dying. And that it doesn't have a battery and can only be operated plugged in. Uh, it was connected to the same USB-C charger that Nintendo ships with its Switch consoles uh, in tests, but that only reveals that it's powered by USB-C. The CLO-001 is surprisingly light on wireless technology. There's no 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio and no Bluetooth, but it does sport a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi radio and a 2.4 gigahertz uh, MM wave uh, sensor. Uh, the sorry, the 24 gigahertz mm wave sensor is the most interesting detail we have. It could be a radar sensor to track movement, likely uh, like closely following gestures or detecting uh, when someone is nearby the device, causing it to turn on automatically, like uh, we've seen with 60 gigahertz sensors found in the Pixel 4 and Aquara smart home uh, presence sensor. The Wi-Fi hardware in the first generation Swiss was created by a Cypress Semiconductor, a company that was acquired a few years ago by uh, Inf- uh, Infineon, uh, which is now promoting the capability of its 24 gigahertz radar sensors. 24 gigahertz uh, radar can provide a detection range of up to 100 meters, which uh, with penetration possible through obstacles, <laughs> oh boy, uh, at the trade-off of a larger size and lower resolution, according to uh, Infineon. Uh, we couldn't tell which hardware is inside of this device, but Infineon, uh, on their website includes comparisons to 60 gigahertz sens- sensors. Uh, so then what is it? Uh, guesses include a new gesture control interface, an upgraded dock for some kind of device at the Super Nintendo World theme parks, uh, or maybe even a return of the quality of life sleep tracking initiative Nintendo attempted a decade ago. Uh, it could also be something to support AR features by detecting real world objects, meaning it could uh, be used for the new Mario Kart Live hardware or even the Pokemon Go like system. It really is anyone's guess right now, given the limited information available. But it's rumored. Uh, but it's rumor season with the Switch Two coming, so let's know if you have any better ideas. Yeah, I was confused too because uh, it looks like it says two point four gigahertz, but yeah, it is but it's twenty four. I've, I've never seen. Tw- 24 and Me i'm neither. like that sounds really high yeah that's like way higher than like normal yeah um and that's because this is a human presence sensing device <laughs> and and lo- look at the size of these yeah and they are the same as this right like that's what it, it's a human presence sensing device so this could be one of their like new one of their way little ring f- peripheral things yeah. yeah type of things or it could be their take on a connect like situation. Like mm. it could be part of the dock yeah. where it, I don't know, tracks your motion and stuff, but yeah. I don't know to the extent at how accurate it is. I, I don't know what human presence sensing means. If it just knows that a person is there or yeah. if it knows exactly what movements the person right. is doing. Um, I'm not sure. My guess is that this is something that they're, Oh, no, it's not a patent. It's an FCC filing. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna, my guess is that it's going to be in the new doc. That's it. You think That's so? That's my guess. I genuinely have no idea. 
I don't know what the well, hell this I, could if be. If it was a patent, I would say that it, it's not going to go anywhere. They patent yeah. things all the time. And I mean, it like, it's anywhere. not battery powered. It has to be plugged in. So, so that's what makes me think it's part of the dock. Right. Because it's not battery powered, so mm -hmm. it's not going to be part of the Joy-Con yeah. or the controller or anything. My first guess was in the Joy-Con, but it seems like it's not part of the Joy-Con. Yeah. Uh, if, if the filings see that it's plugged in, mm -hmm. uh, it could be plugged in via the dock. Yeah. Or it could be like an accessory, but I doubt that. Like, why not just put it in the dock? Yeah. You got so much room in there. So, I don't know. They need some sort of gimmick. I mean, they don't need they anything. They don't need it, but like, but they're they going to add do. one. Yeah. Nintendo always has something weird and wacky uh, that uh, never gets used throughout the life cycle yeah. of the system. So, uh, there needs to be something with this one, uh, or else it's not a Nintendo console. Yeah. So, this could be the wacky thing that mm -hmm. they. Uh, put in the yeah. package that uh you know one new nintendo game one new use. thing that like a couple of launch games will use and then nothing else yeah so mm -hmm. i hope it's not like connected outside of the dock like i hope it's yeah in it. if it's like another peripheral alongside that would be really annoying. i mean that's I don't what, like having all that's what shit. the article made it sound like but like yeah. i then I, I definitely don't see a use case for it you know, it was it, that makes it sound like it's a peripheral for one game specifically. I don't know how FCC filings work. I don't know if yeah. uh, you need to say that it's going to be part of something else. Yeah. But I, and they're saying it's a unique number filing. So it would yeah. be like with the doc, I guess. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. I really hope it's not an extra peripheral. Mm -hmm. It could be a, like another Wii Fit type game or a Ring Fit type yeah. game. It could be its own game. Mm hmm. But we'll have to see. I don't know if it'll launch with the Switch too. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, the Ring Fit sold a shit ton. Yeah. Uh, so and so did the Wii Fit. Yeah. So, of course, they'd want to get one for the new console mm -hmm. too. All right. Uh, that's it for the Nintendo Switch stuff, right? Yeah, that's it. We got Ray Danny with the ninety-eight months. Thank you very much. We got Anonymous who gifted a sub to Joey Day, and we got the Konami Man with twenty months. You guys love you guys. Oh, I hope your Switch Two and one of your OG Switches can both be set as primary. Got too many Switch games to keep them all on both. I would hope that you could have like a primary Switch and a primary Switch Two. Yeah, that would be best. Mm -hmm. I also hope that they change the way that the primary situation works on the second switch yeah like a system where it's a lot easier to bounce between different uh consoles. Mm -hmm. uh compared to the current pc handhelds how do you think the switch 2 will fare on its own uh i don't think it will be directly comparable it will be a lot less powerful than even last year's yeah. pc handhelds even the steam deck um but i think it'll be just fine in nintendo's little world I think that uh, most games will work just fine on it. I think you'll have issues with, like, the next uh, uh, Jedi Fallen Order game yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah. that's probably not going to work on the Switch. Um, but if a develop, it'll be like the old Switch. If a developer cares enough, they will uh, be able to port stuff. I feel like it'll be easier to port stuff, Yeah, but it's not going to be uh, like it is on the PC handled. I can definitely see a situation where when it comes out, because when the Switch came out, like it, it got like, not like bad reviews, but people were like, you know, it's, it's old hardware. The games don't run as well as they do on like other systems. Uh, and they're going to, so I can definitely see like the Switch 2 getting docked a lot for not being as powerful as like a Steam Deck or the RNG Ally or like, you know, basically still running like older tech. Yeah. But like, you know, you know, if it go has the same trajectory as the original Switch, then like by year two and three, we're going to start to realize that like, oh, this is what it can do. And these are how you get the good games on there. And like yeah. things can actually look good and play very well on the Switch 2. Yeah, I'd still rather pick up a Switch than uh, have to futz around with settings. Yeah, you know, in, in, yeah, in a, a lot in a of game. people would, like a, in a in a PC game. Mm -hmm. But I would rather have games on Steam because there's more devices that I could play it on. Yeah. So I've been thinking about this a little bit because uh, there's some games that I want to play on PlayStation. Yeah. But I do not want to play them on a PlayStation. <laughs> I want to play them like basically anywhere but on a right. playstation i yeah. like having the option to play stuff either on my computer 
or on a PC handheld or something like that. See, so I on the Switch, I'm a little excited to play the Zelda, the new Zelda game this yeah. week because I can play it portably on my Switch or I can play it docked at my desk. Yeah, that's the thing. I want to still play. I still get a kick out of playing games on a TV, on a big TV, right. on a couch, you know, with a controller in my hand. So I still want to do that with certain games. Like I still want to play my PlayStation games and my Xbox games on a TV like the Lord intended. But, you know, I think for the ability to play it handheld is a great feature to have. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the switch and this sensor, whatever, and that extra button, like they found a way to make that even more seamless than just, you know, putting it in a dock and like sitting down. And yeah. Couch. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's directly comparable to the uh, PC handhelds. I think it'll be kind of, uh, it'll lose if you compare them. It'll right. be blown but uh, I think, out of the water. I think naturally people are going to compare it to yeah, those things. definitely. But I'm saying that I get a similar experience with my Nintendo Switch because I get to play it in the same place that I play my PC games, which yeah. is at my desk because mm -hmm. the dock is so small. Yeah. And also, I can take it with me portably and play it in bed or on the couch, right. just like I can with the PC games, with these PC games. Right. So, uh, I still like it. Like, even if it's not going to be as powerful, the games don't need to be that powerful, and I'm yeah. fine with that. Again, I'm excited to play the new Zelda game. That does not need to have freaking 4K ray tracing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a Zelda game. And I'll be just fine picking up my Switch for that. On the other side... I see these PlayStation games and I'm like, I don't want to turn on my PlayStation. <laughs> uh, hey, Benny. Thank you for the 17 months. It's Benny. Hey, Benny. <laughs> um, that's it. Uh, that's everybody. Yes. Uh, hey, uh, we're on TikTok, everybody. Yeah. We've been, we've been posting TikToks. We're and, cool. And YouTube shorts. Yes. So go follow us on TikTok and on YouTube shorts. Yeah. Uh, we should, we should, that thing i was gonna ask do you want me to clip that and well no the thing we just uh, had a good conversation about the pc handheld okay situation so you don't want me to clip out uh the part where you say hey we're on tiktok and like put it on tiktok as like no because ad, as like an ad because for... they're there already right but it's they're like, already watching it on there but like it could show up in people's feed is like oh you know scrolling oh look dancing old Fortnite, oh whatever like oh the wolf den hey we're on that bob wolf we're on tiktok <laughs> Backlog! 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 Hey guys. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Backlog. This is a segment of the Wolf Den Podcast where we go through our video game collection. Every game we have ever bought in our entire lives uh, goes into a little Excel spreadsheet. Today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. We have... 973 games in our collection split between the two of us that we have amassed over close to 40 years. 79. 79. Don't say 40 years. <laughs> Do you forget how old I am? You're old. Uh, it's, You're a, old. it's a repeat because we talked. this is one of the first games we talked about. Uh, Batman Dark Tomorrow for the GameCube. Why is it a repeat? Because we did that already. Oh, so we have to pick another we one. We had to pick okay, another one. Yeah, okay. go I, check the archive for I that I thought one. it was like a different version. Go check the backlog. Ooh. Of the backlog. We're on a complete other end. 864. 864. That is, ooh, Resident Evil 5 for the Xbox okay. 360. So uh, we were big Resident we Evil fans. We still are big Resident Evil fans. I haven't played enough of the new stuff. I need to uh, fix that. It, that's that's an issue I need to work out. Yeah. Um. So we played, uh, we were, hu I, we played basically every Resident Evil game up until, uh, I think I stopped at six. It was hard because we were, you know, we were N64 kids and all the play, all the Resident Evil games were on PlayStation, except for like one of them. And one of the reasons why I wanted a GameCube was because all the Resident Evil games were going to be on GameCube. Mm -hmm. So we were able to experience, you know, the Resident Evil remake, uh, Resident Evil Zero, eventually resident evil 4 um and then we got a ps2 so we could play like code veronica on there uh, but yeah eventually like resident evil 4 that was the big one as i've said many times on this podcast it is my favorite game greatest game of all time and then there's news that the next generation of systems is going to get resident evil 5 oh yeah so i 
had a lot of playtime with Resident Evil 2. That was our first Resident Evil That was our first one, yeah. On the N64. Yeah. I played the shit out of that yeah. game. Uh, and that's what got me into Resident Evil so yeah, much. Same, same, and then yeah. you like go over a friend's house and they're playing Resident Evil 3. And I'm like, oh my god, I'll watch yeah. this fucking game. Uh, which I still never played. Uh, <laughs> but then, yeah, on the GameCube, we played all of the... Basically all, all the remakes. Yeah, all the remakes. Uh, well, there was the one remake. There was Zero, which is like the sequel yes. to the remake. And then Resident Evil 4. Yes. Yeah. We played all of that. Yeah. Uh, and we loved Resident Evil 4. Then Resident Evil 5 is basically, uh, takes a lot of the mechanics from Resident Evil 4. Re Resident Evil 5 is like, if if Resident Evil 4... Sucked a little bit more. Exactly. But, but, <laughs> yeah, but no, no, it was real. still really good. It, it got a lot of shit. And I think that it only got a lot of shit because Resident Evil 4 was so good. But I think it got a lot of sh uh, justifiable shit because they do change enough of it to feel wrong. In a way, this this game leaned heavily uh, into the action side of things. People yeah. say like Resident Evil Four took the game took the series in a more action oriented direction, and it did. I but it was like that. It was still a horror game. It was still very scary and unnerving. Resident Evil Five wasn't really scary and unnerving. It definitely was more of an action focused game yeah. where there's where they're now throwing even more enemies at you. There are sections with cover shooting. Uh, there's sections where you actually have to fire back at people with guns. Um, but it's still stuck in like the survival horror mentality where you can't move and shoot at the same time. Yeah, it had You're, the same mechanics as Resident Evil 4. It was it, mechanically similar, and I liked that a lot. I liked it when it was just being Resident Evil 4, but when it was being Resident Evil 5, it like really like hampered the game. Because it was very clear it was trying to like be resident evil in a gears of war world yeah you know i they limited the inventory system even more so you didn't have the big um briefcase where you can hold everything you had yeah, like you just, a you few slots screen and even worse uh you had a partner this time you had so the game you play is Chris i Redfield. think this was the big issue this was, was, was well, that yes. they did focus heavily on having the partner so you yes. have inventory between the two people you have inventory between the two people uh the AI control for your partner, Sheva Alomar, wasn't great. So the game kind of forced you to play as co-op, uh, which I never did. I so, think I did. Did you? I think I did. I never played this co-op. I beat this game by myself. Maybe which that's was, why I liked it. Which was rough. <laughs> it was definitely rough. Um, so yeah, they, they they really tried to push it more into like a Gears of War uh, the, uh What's the word I'm looking for? They tried to go more of the Gears of War route than yeah. a traditional Resident Evil route. And it was the start of, like, you know, them trying to be much more of a big action spectacle than, like, a traditional horror series. People complained about the uh, artificial intelligence of, of uh, Ashley in, in Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Uh, and this is basically you're just playing the whole game with a little partner that has the ability to fend for themselves. But uh, you share items with them so you end up sharing health and stuff you share health you share ammo you yeah. share like key items it gets and really hard towards yeah. the end of the game with all yes. of that stuff yeah. with sharing stuff with the other person that was my biggest issue i didn't mind that it was uh have your focus on uh combat and stuff uh or action i guess i kind of liked that about resident Evil 4 how it kind of got really off the rails like yeah there's, there's fucking leon's doing backflips and yeah, shit no, leon was i thought doing... that was pretty cool and having that in this i thought that was fine i didn't really like i understand that resident evil is like a horror franchise but uh i'm not like a huge horror fan right so i just liked the mechanics of the game and really liked the mechanics of the game my biggest issue was the focus on uh co-op and the focus on multiplayer and the focus on the AI of having another person with you the whole time. And that kind of became an issue. It was fine. I had a fine time playing through this game. It wasn't as good as Resident Evil 4, though. Oh, yeah, this definitely not. This game is basically Resident Evil 4 uh, with a worse story. Uh, you have to drag this other person along with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess a, a shift in... Uh, uh, big tone. shift in tone, yeah. Yeah, big shift in tone. Now you have it's more action oriented. I feel like they, like they were trying to do some interesting things to it. Like as you can see, it takes place during the day, which none of the Resident Evils like really did. Um, it does the story, like you said, isn't very good even for a Resident Evil game. It it 
does what I like to dub, like it has too much Resident Evil bullshit in it. Yeah. Or like it's too tied to the umbrella uh, conspiracy. Wesker comes back. Um, it gets too uh, into the weeds of the whole overarching narrative, which like is fine for a little bit, but this and then later on with six, it just it just keeps going and going and going. You find yourself less and less interested in what they have to say. Yeah, I wasn't interested in the story of this yeah. at all. Like, not even a little yeah. bit. And usually I'm really interested. Up until this point, I've been interested in all of the stories of every yeah. Resident Evil game. Uh, and then this one, I just, I didn't understand what was going on and I couldn't care less. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, it made me not want to play Resident Evil 6. Resident Evil yeah. 6 uh, came out and that was critically panned. That was critically panned because it took all the worst aspects of this. It, it followed the worst aspects of this yeah. instead of following the better aspects of it. Yeah. So I would I still think that this uh got a little bit of an unfair rap because of how great Resident Evil 4 was. I see I don't know. I feel like this kind of got a pass because of how great Resident Evil 4 was and then over time like its reputation got a lot worse because of like what it what it meant for the franchise going forward because of, like it started it down a path of like more action focus. You know what? It got an 83 on Metacritic, yeah. which is pretty good. I mean, Resident Evil 4 is one of the best games of all time. Yeah. So that got a really high Metacritic score. Yeah. I actually don't know what Resident Evil 4 got. I mean, depending 93? on 93? Yeah. So. This is PS5. Oh, that's the remake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, view all platforms. Is it... That's the highest one? Yeah. Oh, even for, like, the GameCube version? Uh, I don't think they show mm. the GameCube version. Uh, okay. All right. So, Yeah. Uh, this game, if you've never played a Resident Evil game, don't start with this. Don't start with this. If you've never played Resident Evil 4, don't play this game. Play Resident Evil 4. Do we want to talk about the racism? I was going to (laughs) say, was this the racist one? This was the racist one. Okay, so I thought so. Context. The game takes place in Africa. You play primarily as a white male protagonist, and the very first uh, gameplay footage ever shown of this game was of your white male protagonist in Africa mowing down black African natives. Now, on the surface of it, yes, kind of icky, very icky. Um, well, th- there is a st- stereotype in in movies like yeah, action movies the, the, where the dark continent they call it. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah, oftentimes they make like the thugs like you yeah. Know, black dudes and then there's the heroic white guy yeah. that, that does some and shit. also to like and, and this you can see this is like an american action movie so you yeah. see you can feel that kind of like shittiness yeah and like you know it came out at a time where like people were like starting to become more aware of this stuff you know it, it does it the first the first look like wasn't a great look capcom tried to like alleviate it like yo you're, they're in huts you got well, I'm, I'm getting to that what's going I'm on i'm getting to that <laughs> They try to like alleviate a lot of it. You you got a black friend in it. That's that the, that's really it. So they did add a lot of uh, white a black pe- friends. They added, and that's it. It's it's like hey, I know a guy. They added a lot more lighter skinned people to the the zombie hordes right. in the game. They tried to like mix it up a little bit, and then <laughs> you go to a mud hut village where black skinned people wearing. Uh, stereotypical tradition, traditional African garbs are literally throwing spears at you. Yeah, this is that like and like as somebody who's like even like back then I was not a keenly aware of like you know racist overtones and things. That right there, you know, I, even I was like, oh, this might be a little far. Yeah, this uh, this looks like it was made by someone who has only heard about Africa in cartoons. Yes. That's what this looks yeah, like. 100%. Uh, to be like, this is a Japanese-made game. Yeah. Um, race relations in Japan are very different from how they are in uh, more Western countries yeah. like the United States, especially like We're the a little United sensitive States. about this stuff because of our history. Yes. With this I don't know if you know particular this. Culture. We got a messed up history. Yeah, we kind of fucked up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Japan doesn't really have that sort of uh, yeah. history. But, you know, they, they could at least do a little bit of yeah. actual research before they put a whole game set in this country that yeah. they clearly don't know much about. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to, like, the part of the game I was just talking about. Yeah. Um, 
It looks ridiculous. Now yeah, that I just got to this part. A lot of people are saying, uh, "Does this should this game be the next Resident Evil game that gets remade?" Um, I am a hard no on that for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I don't think it's particularly necessary. Um, I mean, we didn't think Resident Evil Four needed a remake, and the no. Resident Evil Four remake is pretty good. Yeah, so I, I think it's fine that that got a remake. Uh, this, I think of. I, th- I think the story just sucks. I think I think there's just nothing really to gain out of a remake I think the story sucks. Here. I think the the fundamental idea of it, because it's fundamentally trying to be a co-op shooter, and I don't think that... There's room to improve there's that aspect. De- definitely, yeah. Uh, also, too, you'd have to completely redo the story yeah. and the setting and stuff, and I just don't feel like it's worth it. I would rather have this game exist as is and be available to people who want to experience it rather than having to waste uh, the time and the resources to make a whole new version of Resident Evil 5. I would rather them just make Resident Evil 9, if anything. So is this available for people to get? Yes, it is, uh, it's available on all major platforms, available on Steam. Uh, it's available on Switch, and it plays very well on Switch. I didn't uh, know it was on Switch. Yeah, That's I have it cool. for Switch. It's very, it runs very well. Uh, Griffin X says the next one should be Code Veronica. I agree. Because I'd very much like to play I mean, it. yeah, if you're going to remake any of the Resident Evils, it, it would be Code Veronica. Uh, but, I mean, Dino Crisis is right there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's um, that's Resident Evil 5. Uh, Not one of the good ones. Somebody in the chat said, oh, Oracle Moss says, uh, so was Resident Evil 4 racist for the Spanish? A little bit. Y- it doesn't have the same sort of imagery that I mean. Look at this. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing you got to talk about. Up. Like it's it's the imagery, it's the tone, yeah. it's the explicit. But I I did feel a little bit when I was playing Resident Evil Four. I was like, all oh, the bad guys are Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> it did feel a little weird. Yeah, but by the same token, like this is worse. Yeah, for this sure. like you have to understand like historical context and yeah. like you know towards our country he literally specifically. has a spear yeah that's yeah all right so uh so i don't i i'm i wouldn't recommend this it, it, it's hard to recommend it's yeah. like literally i would say if you've played every resident evil game but this sure Might give it a try. Well, it's yeah. really not as bad as it was made out to be yeah uh but it's completely forgettable yeah so, I, I, maybe it's a cool co-op game if you want to play with somebody maybe else. But I, but I I saw uh uh what's his name uh oh what's the guy be part of Achievement Hunter Ray Navarro and okay. I think Andy Cortez played this game and it's very funny right <laughs> um I'd imagine so. this game being funny to play like two people but if it's supposed to be a survival horror game that kind of defeats the purpose yes um this is the one with boulder punching i should also note this is where we're oh he punches a boulder punches that's a boulder. cool yeah. though that, that's i like, like that shit that's like cool but that's not like horror movie cool you know yeah it's action movie cool but that's like what i'm talking about like it, it this is the beginning of resident evil losing its way before resident evil 7 fixed everything yes all right thanks for watching the back log everybody uh we'll see you at a podcast uh if you're watching the podcast you stay everyone else can Bye. All right. Uh, moving on here. Uh, where are we? Oh, we get to talk about lawsuits. Oh, yay. This is great. I mean, it's <laughs> not great. I don't like that Nintendo and the Pokemon company are suing Power World. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't want that to happen. <sighs> but it's, I thought it would shut some people up, and it didn't. <laughs> It like look. It felt like an inevitability. They like it was. They were playing very fast and loose, uh, pocket pair with like what they were doing with Pat World. I still think that one character looks like an Electro Buzz. <laughs> you know which one I'm so, talking about? So th- yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, of course. There's a lot of characters that look like a lot of Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, and the defense is like, oh, but this Anubis looks like Anubis from yeah. Egypt. So and so does Lucario. Yeah. But like you can't have Lucario, Electabuzz, fucking Gyarados. Yeah. Fucking uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot that look the same. Right. You can't have legally distinct versions of all of the Pokemon because right. then you're very clearly trying to yeah. do a Pokemon ripoff. Well, let's read exactly what uh 
the letter uh, states. This is yes. directly from Nintendo Japan. Uh, to whom it may concern, this was filed on September 19th, 2024. It is uh, co-signed Nintendo uh, Co. and the Pokemon Company. Filing lawsuit for infringement of patent rights against Pocket Pair Inc. Nintendo Co. Limited, headquartered in Kyoto, Japan, uh, together with the Pokemon Company, filed a patent infringement lawsuit in the Tokyo District Court against Pocket Pair Inc. Um, on September 18, 2024. The lawsuit seeks an injunction against infringement and compensation for damages on the grounds that Power World, a game developed and released by the defendant, infringes on multiple patent rights. Nintendo will continue to take necessary actions against any infringement of its intellectual property rights, including the Nintendo brand itself, to protect the intellectual properties it has worked hard to establish over the years. Okay, I want to read some chat messages. Eligible Jim Sock and Silent Mongoose are saying, it's parody though, so it doesn't fly. First of all, they're suing in Japan. Completely irrelevant. They yeah. don't have the same sort of parody laws. Second of all, it's not a parody. <laughs> it's just a game. Uh, third nothing of, funny about this fucking game third of all uh if you listen to what the lawsuit said they are explicitly uh filing a lawsuit for patent infringement yes. not yes. copyright infringement if it was copyright infringement then yeah they would be going after them for parody but they're not they're going after them specifically for any patents like gameplay patents that may have been infringed upon by power world they were clearly looking overall of this stuff and saying to themselves what is the most likely thing we can get them on to win yeah. the lawsuit and what they decided was the patent we don't know what patent exactly yeah but we have a couple of ideas i don't know uh if we have the document i don't think we do but there was one patent that was floating around that was for the just the mechanic of throwing the pokeball yeah um it was it was capturing a creature in a field with a device. Right. That was the patent, which sounds broad, but if you close your eyes two seconds and think, capturing a creature in a field with a device, you're thinking of Pokemon. Yeah. There's no other thing yeah. you could be thinking. It's Pokemon. And Power World is very clearly, you're capturing creatures with mm -hmm. a fucking Pokeball yeah. that everyone who plays Power World calls it a Pokeball. Yeah. I've played Power World. I don't even know what it's called in the game. Um, yeah, it's very clearly a Pokemon ripoff. I don't yeah. know what else to tell you. A lot of people are saying that you shouldn't be able to patent uh, mechanics in a game. I agree to a certain extent. I think that they have to be really... Uh, the, 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 the mechanic in the game needs to be particularly complex yeah because if you have like third person camera view like yeah patented that would be bad for a lot I, of games i forgot what the so like certain things like uh the the nemesis system from shadow of mordor that's patented only monolith studios and warner brothers can use that that's a little ridiculous the insanity effects from eternal darkness sanity's requiem that's patented so only nintendo can use those effects yeah those are a little ridiculous uh but like generic things i think like type of game like you can't patent a first person, sh person shooter you can't patent a platformer you can't patent like a uh, real-time strategy there's game. also that atari pat i think it's atari where uh you uh you can they patented playing a game while the game is loading <laughs> right you yes this before, yeah. Right? yeah like oh that, that was a uh, bandai it was Bandai? Yeah. Okay. So that's why you don't see it anywhere. Yeah. Like playing a little mini game while the real game is loading. Yeah. You, you don't see that because somebody patented it. And that's bad. I yeah. think that that's not very good for innovation. Um, I don't necessarily think that they should be able to patent uh, capturing a creature in a field with a device. Right. But I think Nintendo and Pokemon have uh, the right to their likenesses and... Uh, fucking power world is very clearly a pokemon ripoff so being able to get them on something i think is reasonable it's a cra but it's, it is crazy to me that they're trying to get them on patents and not like genuine like copyright infringement it's, because see, again it, they think this is a safer bet okay but that's it i mean again i still think that's an electro buzz in there. yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. like like very clearly there is yeah. some infringement going on 
uh, they just decided that this was what's going to get them the win in court. But also, we don't know if it's that particular uh, patent that was broken. It could be yeah. something else. Uh, uh, that just seems like the most. Should we read uh, Pocket Pair's response? Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so they tweeted out regarding the lawsuit. Yesterday, a lawsuit was filed against our company for patent infringement. We have received notice of this lawsuit and will begin the appropriate legal proceedings and investigations into the claims of the patent infringement. At this moment, we are unaware of the specific patents we are accused of infringing upon, and we have not been notified of such details. Pocket Pair is a small indie company based in Tokyo. Our goal as a company has always been to create fun games. We will continue to pursue this goal because we know that our games bring joy to millions of gamers around the world. Power World, has a, Power World was a surprise success this year, both for gamers and for us. We were blown away by the amazing response to the game and have been working hard to make it even better for our fans. We will continue improving Power World and strive to create a game that our fans can be proud of. Uh, it is truly unfortunate that we uh, will be forced to allocate significant time to matters unrelated to game development due to this lawsuit. However, we will do our utmost to our, uh, for our fans and to ensure that indie game developers are not hindered or discouraged from pursuing their creative ideas. We apologize to our fans and supporters for any worry or discomfort that this news has caused. As always, thank you for your continued support of Power World and Pocket Pair. Uh, what's interesting, we'll get to this eventually, but what's interesting also is that, uh, weren't they bought partly by PlayStation and in today's, uh, PlayStation announcement, uh, the game's out on PlayStation. Yeah. They released it on PlayStation. I believe that pocket pair got money from PlayStation. Probably. And when I saw that, I was like, don't they know they're going to get sued? <laughs> <laughs> they had to have known that they were going to get sued. I mean, like they could get, I guess. Yeah. Uh, where why can't you just take me to your Wikipedia page? Um, but, yeah, but um, not to jump ahead. Uh, so Power World is available on PlayStation Five right now, except in Japan. Ooh, didn't it know is that. not available in Japan right now. Did not know that. Yeah. So make of that what you will. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's unmistakable that this game is is a uh, heavily Pokemon in. Yes. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't think no. I think that there should be other games yes. that take into like, Pokemon. It's not like a one to one Pokemon ripoff. Because like this game Power World has survival game elements of like crafting and base yeah. building. Um it has guns. <laughs> that's like its big selling point. The the whole joke is it's Pokemon with guns yeah so it's not like it's a direct ripoff they're, like, they're actively trying to do things to separate it from its inspiration yeah the the issues are it's a fucking pokeball <laughs> and fucking electabuzz is the game. yeah and so is lucario and so is gyarados and stuff like it's too close yeah like, like like they did a lot of things that are cool and different uh but they did too many things that are way too close and that's where it got really dangerous yeah. there's other games like nexamon and fucking uh i don't know uh, temtem yeah. which are clearly pokemon inspired but you can tell the difference mm -hmm. uh and this game just gets a little too close yeah and uh that is why they're being sued also because it's incredibly popular it mm -hmm. it, it it broke all uh, aspects of popularity yeah so but you know I think it, it was so popular because one, it was on Game Pass. So, like, people who had Game Pass could easily, like, play it and stuff. And two, people are hungry for a new Pokemon game that isn't just a rehash of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah. I liked a lot of what so, this game did. I yeah. hated a lot of what this game did, right. too. It was just kind of like it. it, it but it, it feels like an Unreal Engine fan project of a Pokemon it game. It offered a window into what a modern pokemon game could possibly be or like what an alternative to pokemon could possibly yeah. be and that's really exciting for people like if pokemon like was good game after game then like this wouldn't be a problem power world will be forgotten but like because like pokemon is in a rut and like people are starting to get fed up with like the more recent pokemon games yeah people are hungry for something else and pow pocket bear gave them something else yeah, I liked a little bit when yeah. I played. It kind of got boring uh, after a while. 
So the patent we were talking about, the one of the uh, capturing creatures in a field, yeah, that was only registered as of 2021, I think. Okay. Uh, so people were thinking it was because this game was announced. It was like when this game was announced, right. they patented that mechanic. Uh, but it's also probably more likely that that was patented right before uh, Arceus came out. Right. Because that's, you know, mm -hmm. the main mechanic in Arceus. This game is a little similar to Arceus in that way. Yeah. Uh, where you just throw the ball at a Pokemon. Um, but Power World did it a little better because you could just fucking throw the ball. You don't have to go through a menu and yeah. hit a couple of buttons to throw the ball. You could mm -hmm. just hit one button and it'll yeah. throw the ball. Um, so again, I think this game did some good stuff. I think that uh, I like the game. I don't like that they're being sued. I don't yeah. like that at all. But they flew too close to the sun. Very obviously. It was very, you could see this from a mile yeah. away. And then, you know, we, we've talked about it previously, how they're going to get fucking sued. Yeah. And then Nintendo said, hey, we're they publicly said, hey, we know about Power World and we're looking into it. And then yeah. we said, yo, they're definitely going to get sued. And everyone's like, no, there's no grounds for them to be sued. It's like, no, motherfucker, look at it. Yeah. This it's is the real clearly. world we're living in now. Yeah. Uh, and now here they are getting sued. And somehow uh, we're still not right. <laughs> with that with that opinion somehow people are like no but what if they lose I, I, my whole thing is like i do find it very odd that they're specifically going after pocket pair for patent infringement what when like it's, it's literally staring you in the face that like the characters are like the same characters uh yeah you know well, i mean well that's again they I mean, feel like, like this is what they like, can get it on it's like easier to prove that like they ripped off a mechanic rather than like you know because like all characters are inspired by like other characters you know daredevil looks like batman so they're not they're not going to sue each other for that yeah um i think it would just be more difficult because uh, people have brought this up before how like just because they look the same doesn't mean that right because they, 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 there's a lot of different aspects of you you have to take both characters and, and break down exactly what about them is the same yeah they could probably get them, though, on all of the different characters that look like all of the different Pokemon. Yeah. Again, because that's just collectively, mm -hmm. they're clearly trying to rip off Pokemon. Um, people keep saying this. EPS in the chat is saying, you can throw Pokeball. You can throw a Pokeball with one button in Arceus. You cannot. You, I think you have to arm the Pokeball. You definitely cannot do it with one button. I think it right. is two buttons. I've had this <laughs> argument before. I'm going to fucking lose my mind. Um, you have to equip... You have to equip it. Yeah, it's like a th whole thing, and, yeah. and in Power World, it's literally you just hit the button. Right. I think it, I think there is a Pokeball button. Yeah. There's a lot of menu systems that I think Power World does right and wrong, mm -hmm. and Pokemon has gotten menus horribly wrong for the past decade. Um. Anyway, we could talk about this for a while. But yeah. Ag once again, I don't like that they're being sued. Right. But. They flew. T they obviously flew too close to the. Top. Oh yeah. If they made those fucking Pokemon just a little bit different. Yeah. I really the reason I'm so worked up is because there's so many people who were like championing Power World. Yeah. And because they liked the game, all of a sudden they don't look like Pokemon. All of a sudden <laughs> they're not gonna get sued. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um. Moving on, PlayStation. Yes. Uh, not the state of play just yet. Uh, we got our look at the 30th anniversary uh, PlayStation collection. Suddenly, everybody likes this PS5 <laughs> Pro that they were talking about. So, let's just get into it. We're getting a, a PS5 Pro, a PS5 Slim, a PS Portal, uh, a P DualSense Edge, and a uh, DualSense Regular all themed after the original PlayStation. They're all clad in that like classic PS1 gray that somehow looks fucking awesome. Looks pretty sick. It does. Um also uh the controller comes with a cable that looks like an original PlayStation. So I don't cable. know if that comes with the controller or if that comes with the consoles. It's gotta come with the well, actually, yeah, the controllers don't come with cables at all. I yeah, I think it just comes with the consoles. We're watching the yeah, yeah. So that's the controller cable. It's got um, it even comes. What I think is cool is it comes with like a PlayStation symbol uh, cable ties. Yeah, which is kind of rad. 
I want to see if they actually say what it comes with. Well, it says it on the blog. Okay. So I'll just read. So the PlayStation 5 Pro console, 30th anniversary limited edition bundle, includes a limited edition PS5 Pro with a two terabyte SSD, Wi-Fi 7 uh, in some territories, uh, and matching limited edition control accessories such as the DualSense Edge. Uh, oh, wait, does this... I think it oh. only comes with the consoles. Yeah, it only yeah, comes it with only, the, the cable only comes with the consoles. So the PS4, the the PS5 Pro comes with... This guy with the three stripes. Yeah, the PS5 Pro comes with both the DualSense and the DualSense Edge. Oh, I didn't even realize. It comes with the charging station for the DualSense Edge. It comes with the... It comes with the, uh, a cover console for the disk drive sold separately. Uh, it includes the vertical stand. So if you want the stand to come <laughs> with your PS5 Pro, get this version. Is there a price? This sounds expensive. We're getting to that. Okay. Um, in addition to all of this, it comes with a original PlayStation controller style cable connector, uh, four PlayStation shaped cable ties, uh, a PlayStation sticker, a limited edition poster, one of 30 designs available, and I know you're really excited for this, a PlayStation paperclip. Yay! <laughs> that's ridiculous. That is literally a paperclip. I know. So that's the Pro. The PlayStation 5 Digital Edition 30th Anniversary Console oh. com comes with... <laughs> Uh, a PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, one terabyte of uh, SSD storage, a DualSense wireless controller. Uh, this also comes with a stand. Yeah. So again, uh, it comes with a matching uh, shell for the disk drive sold separately. Um, original PlayStation controller style cable connector, the cable ties, the PlayStation sticker, the poster, and the paperclip. I haven't seen the poster yet. But uh, it's one of 30 designs. Oh, so it's random. So it could be random. Yeah. I uh, love that it comes with the, the the little enclosure for the disk drive. Yes. Well, I think because this colorway is only available like as part of these, as part of this collection. That's helpful so, like, for yeah. when you upgrade. Um, then you see the, the PlayStation portal. I think that is hysterical. That is very funny. Yeah. I heard that we don't have a story on this, but I heard that the PlayStation portal was the best selling console accessory this year i believe it i'm shocked at how many people like buy that thing and enjoy that thing. i believe it because name another console peripheral name one a controller that has come out in the past year yeah controller yeah not many people are getting controllers true they should probably yeah. be getting controllers also i'd imagine these numbers aren't including third party because if right. there are third party controllers people are probably buying more third party yeah. controls than there are this thing but what else? Yeah, I mean, technically that's like this the biggest... is a controller. Yeah. Uh, it should be noted that the PlayStation 30th Anniversary Collection will release on November 21st. There will be uh, 12,300 units of the PS5 Pro version available for customers to purchase with limited edition numbers etched onto the unit. The number represents the month and date of the first PlayStation console launch. The DualSense Edge. Yes. Uh, That's their elite controller. Yes. It comes with a cable. It comes with a... But it is not the cable. Correct. That is so annoying. Yeah. The cable only comes with the PS5 Pro. The cable's the cool Or the part. PlayStation... The console itself. People are happy that you can get the controller on its own because uh, yes, that's it, the cheapest way to get a PlayStation uh, 1 style peripheral. Yeah. Or a PlayStation... That's, that's the cheapest way to involve yourself in this 30th anniversary edition. Yeah. Game. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, consoles are pretty sick. Yeah. I like what they're doing here. How much is this Pro? Okay. Because it comes with a lot of stuff. So that's the next article. So <laughs> as as noted, um, these things are not up for pre-order yet. Sony did not list the price in their announcement. Uh, however, trusted industry uh, leaker Bill Bill Kuhn at uh, Deal Labs, who has a history of sharing PlayStation product info ahead of schedule, reported on the apparent prices of two of the anniversary PS5 collection pieces over the weekend. The PS1 style makeover of the all digital slim model will seemingly cost $500. That is $50 more than the uh, digital edition of the regular PS5 slim. 
Uh, that's a little upsetting. That is upsetting. Sometimes you get a cost more for the color. And we've seen right. that before. Yeah. A fifty dollars is kind of a lot. I mean, you're getting the extra faceplate, but like, and well, yeah, you're paying that extra fifty dollars for that stand. All you that's true. All you, you get motherfuckers stand want that stand. And you got the stand. Okay. You're getting, you're getting your stand. All right. Uh, the PS1 style DualSense controller will cost eighty dollars. Which is a five dollar markup from a traditional dual sense controller. Which already got a price hike. Yes. That's crazy. Uh that's not terrible for the PS5 Slim bundle. While the all digital PS5 started at four hundred when it launched in twenty twenty, Sony raised the price of the Slim model to four fifty when it was released last year. Uh so what is that extra fifty dollars get you in addition to the coloring? Um the bundle also comes with a matching dual sense, a PlayStation controller style cable, the shaped cable ties, limited edition poster. 30th, 30th anniversary sticker and paperclip. The uh, controller, uh, meanwhile, is at the same price as recently released limited edition Astrobot and Concord controllers. That's true. The Astrobot and the Concord controllers are eighty dollars because they're like specifically themed. Yeah, I understand. I, so, I'm I'm not upset about paying an extra five bucks yeah. for a themed controller. So the PS5 Pro, uh, the the price on that has not come out yet. But the PS5 Pro is launching at $700. So it's very likely that this could be a $750 or even $800 console. I'm going to say... I'm going to tell you why I It's got to be more than eight. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have the Spider-Man PS5, and that was $100 more than a standard PlayStation 5. Did it come with two controllers? It came with one. That That was literally just the PlayStation 5... With the game and Spider-Man themes, like, uh, f- console and controller. Yeah. So, if this is coming with two controllers, one of them being the premium controller, and all that other bric-a-brac, <laughs> it's definitely going to be, like, at a significant premium. I was going to guess $900, but there's not enough here for $900. I yeah. mean, the dual, actually, no, the DualSense Edge is $200, isn't it? Yeah. This could be $900. Yeah. Yeah, um, they're not going to give you a discount because you bundled all this no, stuff. No, no. This is actually they are a little bit, a little bit. It's a like, little bit of a discount. There, it's not going to be a significant. This discount. is going to be nine hundred dollars yeah. at minimum. Yeah. Uh, they also didn't uh, reveal what the portal is going to cost. The portal is like what two hundred normally. Yeah, they cannot charge any more for that no, fucking piece no. of garbage. <laughs> oh, it's the best selling peripheral. It cannot be, uh, that can't be that great of a, like, metric. Like, yeah. like it can't be selling that well. No. It, that just must go to show you that people aren't buying peripherals. Yeah. Um, okay. So, hey, if you wanted a PS5 Pro, this is the one to get. But yeah. This is a little crazy. You were already upset about spending $700. How about nine? I mean, look, if you want that stand... You, you're all bitch and moan about the stand. If you want that stand, now you know where to get it. And you get a little faceplate for when yeah. you inevitably have to also get the disc drive. Yeah. All right. Now we're finally onto the state of play. We're yes. plowing through this. This was not good. There was one game. I thought this was okay. I thought this was state like... State of plays are always bad. They're usually bad. But like, I thought this one was one of the better ones. We'll just get right into it. Uh, Ghost of Yotai... The sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. This uh, was the last thing. Last this was thing their one more thing. Yes. But this was the big deal. And yes. this was the only thing that I thought was exciting. It, it really makes me want to figure out my uh, HDMI situation so I can actually play Ghost of Tsushima and get to this. Yeah, I bought Ghost of Tsushima and just never played it. Yeah. And this is why I was thinking. I was like, I want to play this and I want to play the first one. I want yeah. to get I get through it. And I was like, I could buy it on Steam. Oh, wait, I have it on PlayStation. I was, and I just don't want to turn on my I PlayStation. I was going to buy it on Steam to play it on my Steam Deck. But then I'm like, no. This is a game I want to play on a big TV. So I'm going to wait until I can fix my situation and play it on a big TV. Okay. Um, so yeah, Go- Ghost of Yotai is um, the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima coming out next year. Um, very cool. Very excited for this. It's Yotai. Yotai? And it's... Uh, I try to look it up. Uh, it means... Uh, it's a mountain. Oh, it's a game. mountain. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like uh, some sort of emperor or it could mean uh, like a qualification. Right. But it's a mountain. That it's would a make mountain. a lot more sense. Because <laughs> what's Tsushima? Is that I think that's a, a town. Yeah. Yeah. So that would just. 
Yeah. Um, it looks really cool. Yeah. It looks cool. We don't really see any gameplay. Yeah. We see, I mean, like, some shots of him walking in a field and... and yeah, I mean, that looks like kind of what Ghost of Tsushima looked like, so... Yeah, it looks the same. Um, next up, Astrobot DLC. Okay, this was cool. Yeah. I take it back. This was cool. Uh, there's, uh, speed running stuff. Yes. Uh, like, it's online a, speed It's running. a free DLC... Uh, it'll bring new VIP bots. Um, one's based on Stellar, uh, Stellar Blade and Helldivers 2. Um, and five new online speedrunning levels are also coming. Um, and they promise more uh, on the way. So they said online speedrunning. So does yeah. that mean you're... I don't see other characters like running with you. I think this is just going to be leaderboards, which is a little upsetting. Probably, yeah. I don't like that. But yeah. I mean... I mean, it's cool that they're like the game just came out and they're already like, hey, we got more coming. I'm fine with leaderboards. Yeah. But uh, if you're going to say online, like multiplayer shit, it'd be cooler if it was like, yeah, all guys type situation. Yeah. Uh, okay. Horizon Zero Dawn remastered. This is a uh, high fidelity remaster of the original Horizon Zero Dawn. It will be out October 30th. Anyone who owns the PS4 original will be available to upgrade to the remaster for ten dollars, and this will be available on PS5 and Windows PC. This was a little upsetting because uh, they just got done talking about Horizon Lego Horizon Adventures. Yeah, and then they're like, "And there's big news for fans of Alloy." Yeah, Aloy. Aloy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, we're remastering the game. It made it seem like it was going to be a whole new yeah. game, or at least DLC. I mean, this, or something. this got like uh, leaked before the state of play came out, and like I just think this is kind of a I, i'm mad because it's ten dollars i already have the game on two different systems these faces I'm don't don't fi- i'm finally like playing it now and i'm not gonna like plunk down another ten dollars uh, just to have a, a nicer looking version of it when the game already looked that nice to begin with yeah it looks fine it looks good you Having know to pay more to play this like i get it they put a lot of work into it yeah but, like they, they didn't need to put any work into it they <laughs> said they, they actually re-recorded like 10 hours worth of dialogue yeah for this game so i don't like how the face looks like a adult face on a child's body <laughs> I know, that looks so weird <laughs> This is what happens when you uh, yeah. add fidelity. M- Moshi cap your children properly. <laughs> um, Lego Horizon Adventures, uh, we saw this. Um, we now have a release date. It's November 14th on PS5, Windows PC, and the Switch. Seems silly. Yeah. Seems goofy. Might might be your type of uh, Horizon game, though. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds release date of coming February 28th, 2025. Uh, they will reveal more at Tokyo Game Show later this week. Um, Dynasty Warriors Origins gets a release date of uh, 2025. Oh, I missed this one. Oh, sorry. January 17th, 2025. I missed that one. Uh, uh, Midnight Walk. The Midnight Walk. This game is from the developers of Lost and Random. It's a PSVR 2 and a PS5 game. Um, everything's made out of clay. Like, they actually use claymation to, Oh, like, that's really cool. Yeah. I like that. Uh, f- spring 2025 is when this game will be out. Uh, Hell is Us coming this, to PS5 in 2025. This game looks fucking rad. This looked cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought it was Housemark. I thought it was, uh, like, a Returnal type situation. You know what this game reminded me of? Remember in Metal Gear Solid 3, like, the nightmare you have? Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah. Snake Eater. Like, oh, when yeah. you get captured and, like, if you save a, your game at a certain point and you wake up in prison, like, you have a nightmare where you play, like, a Vampire Hunter game. No, I don't, you don't remember, remember that, that at all. No. Oh, dude. No, I gotta watch that. Yeah, I looked that up. Like, um, This looked like Returnal to me. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks really cool. Yeah. I thought it would have been cool if they just named the game Hell. Yeah, I because, thought that's what I thought it was going to be yeah, called. Yeah, because they flash hell, hell, and I was like, that's a cool name yeah. for a game. Just call it hell. Hell is us. But no, hell is us is a little too edgy. Yeah. But no, this looks cool. Yeah. It looks like Returnal with swords, Yeah, and I'm cool with that. Uh, I, I, I want to try this one. Yeah. All right. Next up, Power World is now on PS5. <laughs> Again, odd time, and also, not if you're in Japan. <laughs> yeah, and this is literally just the same Power World. Yeah. So it's just on PS5 now. Mm-hmm. There's nothing exciting about that. Uh, Alan Wake 2, The Lake House. This is the second add-on for Alan Wake 2. Um, did they give a release date? It uh, They didn't. Oh, October. I, so thought, soon. I thought this was uh, Control. Yes. I mean, it takes place in the same universe, so. Okay. 
makes a lot of sense. Uh, Maybe this will be bridging the gap between. Yeah, Last of Us Part One coming to PlayStation Plus. We said that. Uh, the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver One and Two remastered. This got leaked yesterday. Um, yeah, I saw tweets about it already. Yeah, and but, like comparison shots. So the old one and the from new Crystal one. Dynamics and Aspire, Soul Reaver One and Two remastered uh, officially announced in the state of play. They will be coming this December. I didn't know it was Aspire. Yeah, so you might want to yeah aware. wait for a review because yeah. they've been uh, falling off recently. They yeah. used to make great uh, uh, ports, but uh, or remasters not really remasters they were really just ports ports yeah uh and this looks like they actually did some work to it it looks like they're doing it in conjunction with crystal dynamics who like made the original game so that makes sense hopefully that helps i've been wanting to play this uh because whenever i talk about uh like uh revolutions in third person games like like how the camera works and stuff people bring up this game so I okay. want to uh, try this and figure it out. Yeah, this is a series that's always like confused me because the first game in the series, The Legacy of Kane is the series. The first game was Blood Omen. And then the next game was Soul Reaver. And then there's like a couple of others. And then Blood Omen 2 wasn't until like the late PlayStation 2 era. So maybe I'll actually like dive into this and like actually figure out what the hell this whole series yeah. is about. I want to play the original though. I don't want to play the because I want to know how it controlled back in the right. day, you know? Yeah. Well, the original is on a, a PlayStation 1 game. Okay. I'm helping you out here. Uh, Stellar Blade is getting new content, including a photo mode of, and in a collaboration with Nier Automata. Cool. Yep. Uh, Lunar Remaster Collection, the classic role-playing games, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete, and Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete are coming to PlayStation with enhanced graphics, audio, and quality of life improvements uh, next year. TMNT Shredder's Revenge is getting uh, the Radical Reptiles DLC, uh, which includes the characters Mona Lisa and Mondo Gecko. Who the fuck are they? You don't know Mondo Gecko? Nope. We had his action figure. Okay, where is he? So first they're showing off Mona Lisa. Oh, th- this guy? Yeah, that guy. Mondo Gecko. We had his action figure. I don't remember it. Oh, man. Mondo Gecko. Cool dude. Uh, Mona Lisa, she was like the girl like lizard in the Wait, show. It's, it's all coming back to me. Yeah. Right? Okay. He had a roller skate on his tail. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming back to me. Uh, but not only that, so that's going to be paid DLC, but in a free update will include new music from composers uh, Toyama uh, Tomita, Kenji Yamagishi, and Anamaguchi, and more. Anamaguchi? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, this is the page where they say everybody. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, next up, Metro Awakening, the spirit, the virtual reality spinoff to the Metro series is coming on November 7th, uh, as revealed in the trailer. Uh, Fantasian Neo Dimension, uh, Mistwalker's very cool looking RPG is breaking free of its Apple Arcade confines later this year. Um, this is from Final Fantasy veterans uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi and uh, Nobu Uematsu. It's coming to PS4 and PS5 on December 5th. So I heard... This was like a big deal because that guy is like a legendary RPG guy. Yeah, he made it. he's like the he was like the main Final Fantasy guy. And this is essentially the spiritual successor to Final Fantasy VI specifically. Okay, people so, like Final Fantasy VI and, a lot. Yeah. Uh, also, like the set pieces are supposed to be really pretty. They because, look like dioramas. Yeah. Yeah, I think they were actually like made in yeah. like real life, and then they put the characters in there. Yeah. And then this was uh, locked to Apple devices. It was Apple Arcade exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, not a lot of people got to play yeah. it. So people are excited for that one. Yeah. Uh, Fear of the Spotlight, retro horror game Fear of the Spotlight coming to PS5 in October, along with a PC re-release thanks to publisher Blumhouse Games. This was designed to look like a, a PS1 era horror game. Yeah, which, this is interesting because this yeah. came right after they said, we talked about the Legacy of Kane collection, yeah. and they're like, fans of the PlayStation 1 will also like yeah. this retro-inspired horror game. Yeah. Um. Arc Age Chronicles, uh, it's a brand new sequel to Arc Age and Arc Age Unchained, set 50 years after the original. It is coming um, to PS5 in 2025. Dragon Age The Veil Guard, BioWare's uh, latest Dragon Age game is almost here. Uh, we got a lengthy oh, look at- this is a different at, game? Yes. <laughs> it is a lengthy look at gameplay uh, featuring the Veil Guard battling a blighted dragon known as uh, Cronus. Uh, it is coming to PS5 and other platforms on October 31st. Uh, I zoned out completely during this part. Yep. I'm not going to lie. Yep. 
uh, Towers of Agab. Uh, Aga, 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 Agabasa. 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 Uh, action adventure fantasy builder game coming in November. Uh, Hitman World of Assassination VR. All right, coming this in is December. so funny. <laughs> the the freaking VR headset on the Hitman. <laughs> Dude, this whole thing like kind of made me want a PSVR 5. I kind of want to like You're try this. You're more than welcome to take it. So like a big thing like they highlighted was like. <laughs> <laughs> Punch that guy in the face. The, a big thing that I highlighted Dunk. was like dual wielding because like that was a big thing of like the original Hitman games was like you dual wield you can't do that in the world of assassination okay. series but I don't give a shit what I found really funny was the part where you're like he sneaks up behind like the, the fat guy on the beach and he's just got his hands out like ready to strangle him and then he gets close enough and he just his hands just go yeah, they turn into <laughs> strangle hands. It's like very obvious like, that oh like God, this guy has intense to awesome. strangle. This looks awesome. Oh man, it does look kind of cool. Yeah, and, and I like how the trailer is not taking. Oh, here it is. There's, uh, ah, ah, strangle ah, hands. <laughs> it's like he equipped it strangle yeah. hands. It's very clear that this is not taking itself seriously. No, I because mean, they like, know that it's going to be silly playing. Well, because like, yeah, the Hitman games like they have a very serious like tone to them, like a very serious story. But like once you actually start playing the game, it's fucking hysterical. <laughs> so like they're they're very much leaning into that. But then you add VR to it, and it gets a, it gets more uncanny. Like, oh look, yeah. you just caught a bullet with a pan and looked at it. <laughs> I know. Oh man. Yeah. This this looks pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and last up, the PlayStation 5 Chroma Collection. I didn't see this. We got new colors for uh, controllers and side panels. Uh, you got Chroma Pearl, Chroma Indigo, and Chroma Teal. Uh, these go up for pre-order on October 3rd. Oh, uh, yeah, they go up for pre-order on October 3rd. The Chroma Pearl and Indigos will be on sale November 7th. The Teal is coming January next year. I actually liked it. This looks really cool. Yeah, it's it, weird that another one's coming next year. I know. That's weird. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's nice. But you know what? They're not fucking translucent, so screw them. <laughs> screw them. You're right. You want to talk about the translucent? Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're All moving right. right on to Xbox, Trans baby. Woo! is back, baby. Woo! Uh, the Cyber Series. Uh, we are thrilled to unveil the Cyber Series for Xbox Elite Wireless Controller 2. Uh, with the design lab, this collection taps into the nostalgia of classic tech designs with six stunning transparent top uh, top cases, letting you Ooh, relive. The clear looks sick. So, I didn't see that. So, all right. So, they added translucent uh, options to the Elite controllers and design lab. That what's on screen is something different. That is, so that is the what's it called? The Ghost, Ghost Cipher. Cipher. This is you can just buy this. Okay. This is this will just be available. Oh, this isn't elite either. No, it's a regular one. Ah, it looks awesome. It though. does look fucking that looks awesome. Great. So yeah, uh, Xbox kills it with. This. They really do. So yeah, so for the Elite Series Two, you get uh, Ghost Cipher, which is uh, that clear one we just showed. Uh, Velocity Cipher, which is green. Uh, Astral Cipher, which is like that blue color they just came out with. Um, Surf Cipher is like. Wait, which one? The surf no surf cipher is the blue one. Astral cipher is a, is the purple one. That's that yep. atomic purple. Uh, candy cipher is pink, and pulse cipher is red. Okay, I'm going through them all. Yeah, I just finally opened the design lab. It took yeah. a second. Uh, these are cool. You can't yeah you can get the ghost cipher color, but yeah. uh, so you can make an elite controller that's similar to the one that we just saw. Yeah. The only difference is you're gonna have those big ugly uh uh. Uh, fucking the, the grips. grips. Yeah. yeah. Not only like that, that, so like the one other downside to this is it's just the front. The back plate is. Is the, it the back on the other one? Yeah, on the other one. It, oh, no, it's not the back on the other yeah, one. Yeah, it's white. But, but okay. I, I kind of like that. I yeah, that kind of works. Uh, so everybody's focused on the translucent uh, faceplate, which is awesome. But then yeah. you also get these little, like, uh, yeah. So, um, chrome uh, little, little accents. Yeah, the, uh, the D pad. And the paddles get uh, new chromatic effects, energy chroma and sunset chroma. Yes. So those are also very cool. Yes, yes. So unfortunately, if you want the Elite controller, uh, they're two hundred dollars. Yes. Uh, and, and up. Yeah. I think mine was like two fifty. Well, like so. There's the like you can just get the controller itself, but then if you want the accessories, that's like an extra like 
thirty dollars or fifty dollars on top of it. Yeah, and you're not gonna get an elite controller and not get a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, you, you can get like a basic elite controller for like under two hundred dollars, I think. Yeah, but, under under a hundred dollars in a lot of cases. Well, that's the core. Yeah, and that is kind of there's not a lot going on with. The I think core. a regular like elite two controller, like with all the bells and whistles, is like a hundred fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. So it's less than a dual sense edge. Yeah, but if you want if you want to design your own, you're looking at around two hundred dollars. Yeah, actually, no, the base is one hundred fifty. But if you want the cool colors and stuff, it's gonna be upwards of like two hundred. Yeah, the 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 transparent like does cost extra. So, uh, yeah, uh, mine was like two fifty. Yeah, and I mine's just white with like some accents yeah. and stuff. So, uh, I'm I would love one of these, but I'm not buying another controller. There's no reason for me to have. Yeah, Xbox like I absolutely controller. want this, but I cannot justify all that money. I can't keep buying controllers. Yeah, no one's playing with me. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah uh okay Le- well before we get to the last news uh let's read some notifications yeah. uh gr sia thank you for the two months wicked will thanks for the two months and farmer gooch with ten dollars thank you so much thank you everybody all right last news real quick uh sonic central yes uh sony wasn't the only one who had a live stream talking about all their new stuff this year um sonic team did it too we got Sonic Rumble uh, bringing Battle Royale to mobile and PC this winter. Uh, you like Fall Guys? This is the Sonic version of it. Uh, so- Super Monkey Ball Banana uh, Rumble gets Sonic Balls and Shadow cosplay. Um, re- a lot of Sonic merch was revealed, including uh, motorcycle helmets, new Lego Whoa. sets. Um, Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sonic is coming to Top Golf near you. So if you you have a Top Golf uh-huh. near you, you, they got Sonic. You, do you know what Top Golf is? I know what Top Golf is. Well, now there's Sonic in it. I know, but how? <laughs> the, uh, I think in the screen when like you hit the golf ball, Sonic goes to where you. Wait, that's golf. cool. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, this is for Will. Sonic is teaming up with DC Comics for a comic book series coming in March of 2025. Sega and DC will re- release uh one issue a month of a special series combining the two franchises. Not only will Sonic team up with the likes of Batman and Superman, it is also possible we will see him and his crew do so while basically cosplaying as each character. Um, for example, Shadow will be Batman, Knuckles will be Superman, Amy is Wonder Woman, Sonic is the Flash, Silver is Green Lantern, and Tails is Cyborg. I love that. That, this, that sounds I, awesome. I, I, I'm going to read all of those and i'm going to cry during mm-hmm. all of those because this is everything that five-year-old will has ever wanted in his life batman and sonic the hedgehog and if i ever get roger craig smith who has played both of them read it to me <laughs> i'm just going to be a mess on the floor so was is this official was this put that, yeah. on this image of sonic that as is, the flash that is official that looks so fake <laughs> that's insane they all look like you know basic mock-ups it's not official they haven't announced who the illustrator Okay. Of these are, but I can't believe that in an official Sonic thing they put a picture of Sonic as the Flash. I think that's that, fucking crazy. So my theory is that that's concept art that they just said good enough for they the just live just pulled stream. off of Deviant Art. Yeah, um, they did announce that the series is going to be written by uh, Ian Flynn, classic Sonic comics writer Ian okay. Flynn. So I hope you like his shit. Uh, and they said that this is going to extend into 2026. So this is Damn. not the last we see of Sonic and DC working together. That's, that's a long time. Uh, we got a new trailer for Sonic X Shadow Generations. It actually looked really cool. Okay. It kind of made me want to get the game. I want to like, get the game. Like uh, I wasn't going to get the game like at launch, mm-hmm. but like now I kind of do because like it showed more of what like Shadow's part of it will be, and like his unique levels and stuff. So like I kind of want to see that. I want to get it for a different reason, but we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, the trailer showed uh, both cinematics and gameplay of the title due out October 25th, naturally focusing uh, on Shadow. The trailer sets up some sort of time travel storyline as well as uh, Shadow chasing down Maria. The collector's edition was announced uh, featuring an additional product such as a CD, Sonic Shoe Keyring, a Dreamcast statue. Uh, and uh, I think if you get the day one edition, it comes with um, Gerald Robotnik's journal. Okay. So that's That's cool. what I've always wanted. Yeah. Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations is getting a prologue anime in September. So there you go, anime fans. Uh, so yeah. So tomorrow was the first episode. Okay, what they don't have here, though, is that uh, Sonic Generations is getting uh, the movie Shadow. Yes, voiced by Keanu voiced Reeves. Voiced by Keanu Reeves. That makes me want it. Yeah. 
that's i mean i already kind of wanted it but like it's that's not, like it's also getting an extra level based on the movie yeah. that so, sounds fucking that's awesome. rad yeah yeah so i'm interested in this i yeah. didn't play much of sonic generations i played uh, a little bit of it for xbox 360 and i think i played a little bit on the 3ds yeah but people say the 3ds, 3DS version, version is not good yeah, yeah no i i played the hell out of the original i replayed sonic generation so i'm gonna get this yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited for this yeah also i gotta watch the second movie and there's yeah, me the too. Movie. uh that's it that's it people were saying that was a great announcement uh i guess i'm just happy for more shadow yeah games. we already knew that game yeah when is that game out when is the, the movie out the game is october 25th okay. i believe That's the, the movie because i need some time to watch the second movie yeah the movie is coming out december 20th okay plenty, plenty of time. time plenty of time all right that's all the news yes hey where did it go there it is. Uh, all right, so this isn't a funny one. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is Nintendo World. Rockefeller Plaza, New York City, opened May 2005. Whoa. Uh, it was first Pokemon Center. Yes. In 2001 when it opened. Uh, what a year for New York. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, in 2005, it reopened as Nintendo World. No more Pokemon. Right. Although there was a big Pokemon presence in there. Uh, I don't remember it looking like this at all uh except for one of the pictures so here you have these little eggs where you uh, i guess are playing gamecube games yeah and this is very much stretched to look at the screen stretch right yeah there. that's crazy uh and then uh you have like a million monitors playing ads for all of their different stuff mm -hmm. uh you have more places to play games you have their little uh uh archive of older consoles which has grown exponentially since yeah then. uh this area i remember i remember these little balls where you sit and you play ds uh -huh. games and i remember specifically i think i got my wii first for my friends and i sat down and played ds waiting nice um and that's it there's another tweet i guess that shows the pokemon presence uh and then what it looks like on the outside very yeah. blue uh and that's it uh not a lot has changed uh but at the same time, uh, a lot's changed because yeah. uh, this whole area right here is all Pokemon stuff, and it seems like it's bigger than it is here. Right. Um, they don't have that big display of TVs anymore. Uh, this little pod is not there. It's a lot more open. There's more space and stuff. But otherwise, uh, that's what Nintendo New York City used to look like. Yeah. Now, it's a lot different. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, we'll talk to you. Yes, let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Maybe. We got Matt Bauer who says, Shadows of the Empire was what got me into Star Wars. I feel seen. Oh, yeah. We're talking about how they're, they're making action figures of that again. What got us into Star Wars? Just being on... Well, they the used, WB, right? They, yeah, they used, they used to play Star Wars on TV. I think that was it. That was yeah. it. Yeah, like, uh, but uh, so they would play it on TV, and like, we're like, oh man, this Star Wars thing is cool. And then the special editions came out in '97, where they actually put them in theaters. Yeah, and we lost our mind. Yeah, because like, you know, I'm an advocate of watching movies at home. There is something to say about watching some movies, specifically Star Wars, on a big screen. Yeah. Like that you can't replicate at home. It's a it's a different thing. They must have played it on TV a lot. They did. Because yeah. uh so it debuted forty years ago. Yeah, nineteen seventy seven. No, no, no. Uh on TV. Like on oh. the network television premiere was forty years ago. Oh, uh, okay. So that would be nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Uh that's before our time. Yeah. I'm trying to see how often did they play it? I was seeing if there was maybe like a way to like uh, quantify. I mean, it. I don't know. Uh, this says 1982 was when it first debuted. Okay. I don't know. Um, yeah, I remember playing all the time, and then yeah, it came to theaters, and we kind of lost our minds. Did yeah. we go alone? I to, to the movies? I vaguely remember being dropped off in the movie. No, our parents went, and with we us. should not have been. No, alone. our parents went with us. Okay. Um. Did they leave? 
No, they watched it with us. I don't remember them being there. Uh, all right. Well, what else? Um, Moonam said, "Do you think the next Nintendo console will keep NFC support? I think Nintendo will drop it finally." I don't know. I don't think it needs it. I yeah. think people are a little crazy with NFC. Um, it's weird because I like the Amiibos. I think they were yeah. cool. I think they had cool functionality. Uh, I think they stopped supporting Amiibos, and I kind of don't really care. I like, don't think, <laughs> I'm not no, really... I don't, they didn't stop supporting Amiibos. Not stop supporting, but they stopped... Prioritizing. Prioritizing yeah. it, and they don't promote them at all. Yeah. Uh, they dropped a significant amount of support there's barely any amiibos coming up yeah there are amiibos but there's barely any yeah and the functionality really isn't exciting the thing that's cool about the amiibos is the physical object i don't care about the way it interacts with the game it almost never has a cool interaction with the game um there's that there's like nfc and phones people go nuts about i guess because of the tap to pay yeah i don't use that so i don't really care oh i use that it's really convenient so uh I think that NFC is kind of just like a speck on a sheet and losing it makes people go, ah, the old one was better. Yeah, but I feel like at the same time, like how uh, how expensive could it be to add like NFC functionality to it at this point, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's an expensive thing. I think it's uh, how much can we fit into this fucking right. controller because the uh, Joy-Con already are pretty small mm-hmm. and I'd imagine now they're making a little bit of a bigger one. They're going to pack it with other shit. Yeah. Um, I should, got magnets in it. Now. Yeah. I should not be looking at Amazon for how much these cost because these are like $20, $30. Amiibo? Yeah. That's not a lot. Well, because it used to be like 10 or 11 Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the aftermarket. Yeah. Situation is crazy. Um, what else? Uh, oh, and every time I like make a video on a controller, everyone's like, what about NFC support? And it's like, who fucking cares about <laughs> NFC support? I would be interested to know like like how many people are actually using like NFC support. No one. Yeah. Everybody is just saying that they you, right. Like, pe- people buy amiibo to put on the shelves. They don't buy them to actually yeah. use them in the fucking game. I remember when like an amiibo came and it, uh, the cereal box was an amiibo. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Smash Bros. was the best with amiibo, but yeah. that was it. Everything else was kind of yeah. Stupid. I think in in Metroid Dread it was a little bit of a cheat code. You got like extra items. A lot of games are a cheat code. Yeah. Most of the Zelda games are cheat codes. Eric says, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, greatest series of all time. Birdman better not let me down. I need unrealistic skateboarding and ska punk in a s- suppository. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yes. Eric wants the new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater so he can shove it up his ass. <laughs> Hope it's not a digital only game because then you're then out you're of luck. you're going to be really disappointed. Yeah. It'll be too easy for yeah. you. Yeah. AKA Just Joe says, do you think the second screen could be confused with a touchpad on the back, like a PS Vita? Mm. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I know that was rumored ages ago. I doubt it's true, but it could be the weird thing that Nintendo always brings in to differentiate it from the other con. It could be maybe people saw a second touch sensor and they thought maybe that was a screen, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I feel like the rear touchpad is too weird even for Nintendo. You know, like that yeah. like didn't really like work. I mean, it worked, but like in terms of gameplay, like no game really like was able to implement it well. I think something's up with that front button. Yeah. That extra button. That could Maybe that could be a hole for a sensor of some yeah. kind. I don't know. TPG Coma says, I'm pretty sure on the Pokemon website, Pokemon Legends ZA says it's releasing on Switch and the next Nintendo console. Yeah, I think we talked about that. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I think, no, actually, that said the Nintendo Switch family of systems, yes. I think. And then there's a new game that we talked about last week that said it was launching on the The Switch next too. Nintendo, yeah. yeah. Or the next Nintendo console. Um, yeah, I think that's what happened. Uh. Anyway, all right. Now we're in the chat. Yes. How you got? What do you got? Now I want to look up a uh, Pokemon VA. Uh, is it a hundred percent confirmed that the Switch Two will not have an OLED in its first iteration? I don't think that is confirmed. Uh, there. According, to, I mean, nothing's confirmed, but yeah. according to the spec list, I don't think there's anything about an OLED. 
I mean, it would go hard. It would be hard to go back to an uh, an LCD screen after they released the OLED, you know. Because then that that then for a lot of people that wouldn't seem like a significant upgrade. They will. Yeah. They will go back. Uh, they're not going to release it with an OLED. Yeah. They're going to have another version. That has right. OLED. They, they want to cut costs as much as possible yeah. with the first iteration, uh, so that then they could uh, tweak it later. Yeah. Uh, um, my sister, who just paid sixty bucks f- uh, to get the new Splatoon amiibos, would be sad to hear this. Damn. Sixty bucks. Yeah. I guess I guess you know the collector's market is still high for amiibo. Yeah, but again, people are just yeah. buying them to put them on their shelves. <laughs> uh, I don't see where it says the platforms for Legends Arceus on the Wikipedia. I mean, Legends ZA on the Wikipedia, right. it just says Nintendo uh, or Nintendo Switch. I'm sorry. Well, Nintendo Family Consoles could just mean like the Switch, the Switch. Well, Lite I'm not even Switch seeing OLED. the Nintendo Family right. of Consoles. So I don't see the actual. Um, think I got a chance at 30th anniversary Pokemon stuff. Crazy, they are only making 12.3k, but I will try. What are you talking about? The 30th anniversary PlayStation stuff. Oh, I read Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're only making um 12.3k of the Pro. I don't know. They didn't say how much they're gonna make of the other ones. It is gonna be limited. But I think you have a better chance of getting a PS5 base model in the 30th anniversary than you are the Pro. I would imagine not many people are buying the Pro because that's going to be 900 goddamn dollars. Yeah, I mean, like, there's going to be like 12,000 like units of that. So I'm sure, like, after the the you know the initial buyers like get theirs, like those are going to be sitting on the shelf for a while. Bill Master says, Bob, I love how you didn't out yourself for shorting out to the SP motherboard, soldering it while it was on. <laughs> what do you mean out myself? I did it live. <laughs> Everyone can see it. Someone clipped it and I was like, I definitely yeah. ruined that thing. I was really hoping that it would just eventually turn yeah. on, but no. Then I saw the clip back and I was like, I definitely fucked something up. Oh, that's another reason why I can't make that video this week is because I shorted the board. <laughs> I could just run to a retro yeah. game store and get a, an SP, but uh, I also am missing a whole part. And also, this is the real reason I'm not doing that video. The guy who designed the Gotcha SP, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but he's working on a new version. So mm. uh, I'm just going to wait for the new version. Also, Macho Nacho is releasing a video uh, Thursday or Friday right, on the Gotcha SP. So and so that's the square game boy sp yeah uh i made a flex pcb to make that easier uh and i sent one to macho nacho so he will have one in his video and i right. fixed the design so it will work on the next version but that's finally available if you want to yeah. do your own uh gun. i found the steam database tweet about the current steam has now reached 38 million concurrent users. Wow. Yeah, Steam's huge. Yeah. I'd imagine Steam had a pretty big uptick when the Steam Deck. But it's yeah. always, it's, look at this, it's well, always going up. Yeah, I guess so. Everybody just eventually ends up with a Steam account. Yeah. And now you don't even need a Steam account to have a Steam Deck. Apparently they, they opened it up to uh, gifting. So you can you can choose oh, to, to or, buy it. Yeah. But to use it you need a Steam account. Right. But you can like choose to get it without a Steam account like linked to it. That's kinda cool. Yeah. That means they have enough now. They're yeah. Finally making enough. Uh how's YouTube doing? How are you over there on YouTube? Do you think they will release thirtieth anniversary side panels? No. No. They said it was gonna be because it's not just the side panels, the actual like core system isn't black. It's like a darker gray. It it goes along with the whole PlayStation One aesthetic. Those are in-game players at the same time. Wow, that is actually a lot. Yeah. Wait, really? Isn't it just people playing a game at all? Concurrent. That that makes it sound like it's at the same time. I feel like that's just Steam is open on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> True. Because most it defaults to opening when the computer turns on, and most people don't turn that off. Right. I think that's crazy. I think when you turn a computer on, nothing should turn on 
at all. Yeah. Very few. Th- if you mm-hmm. use Dropbox, sure. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Maybe things running in the background that you like having running in the background, but if an app opens when you turn the fucking computer on, turn that shit off. Yeah. That's a little... I think that's psychotic. Also, if you're one of those guys that never turns your computer off, just leaves it on all the time. That's psychotic behavior <laughs> as well. I bought the original Steam Deck and am craving the OLED version so bad I wouldn't be able to sell mine for pennies. I love the OLED. Um, I don't miss it as much as I thought I would when I'm playing these other devices, though. Yeah. It is really nice, but if you I like, it, you could save your money if you have the old one. It's not really that that crazy. Rose, do you believe Concord took four hundred million to make, or was it a one big over exaggeration? Yeah, I believe it's very easy for these big game companies to spend a lot of money. Yeah. Uh... I mean, what was like Spider-Man 2 was like $300 million. Uh, and Concord allegedly also had an eight-year development cycle. How could Concord be more? <laughs> I, I don't know. That I mean, clearly mismanagement. Yeah. But like, I think people are, you know, I thought people were already like hip to the fact that, you know, AAA games are really expensive. But I think finally seeing that a game like Concord, which was an absolute failure out the gate, cost $400 million, you know, and was taken down like immediately and they refunded everybody yeah that's so ridiculous i mean i don't i don't even know if like that seems like a like a massive like, waste of hollywood money. movies don't even cost 400 million dollars to make how much did the bat girl movie cost 90 that's it that's it <laughs> and they, they looked at that and said this is not going to make any money let's just sh- shove it down yeah. the shitter you know what we should release the flash i don't believe that the back row movie would have been good. I know that it sounds good and people were talking about how great it was. I think there's, it would would have been a dud. There's different so the expectations for back row were different because it was supposed to be a direct to streaming movie. It was supposed oh. to debut on Max. I didn't know that. It was not supposed to be a big theatrical release. That's why it only cost 90 million dollars because they were just it was going to be a mid-budget movie to just put there. But instead of like finishing it and releasing it in some capacity, they canned it and they went with the Flash. Yeah, I never saw the Flash. It looks really bad. It did don't. Uh, are you going to get the Switch Lite OLED mod? I'm thinking about it. I have no desire to pick up my Switch Lite at all. Yeah. But, uh, that I mean, that mod looks cool. I'm I'm interested. Mom gave me her Switch Lite to basically just give it to my daughter. That's a good idea. I, I am very scared to do that. Because I know once I give it to her, I'll never get it to pry it out of her hands. Uh, I know you can set parental limits on it. Get a get a Nerf case for sure. True. Do we yeah. have one? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I do have to like reset it, and then I got to create her an account so she can play yeah. the Switch Online game. No, that's great. Yeah. Uh... Will, will you be bringing your wife specifically <laughs> to the movies this week to see Fathom Events showing Superman, Super Slash Man, the Christopher Reeves story? Uh, no, <laughs> we don't go to the movies together anymore. Have, have uh, you ever gone to a Fathom event? No. I always hear about it. You know what I did? What did you it do? It was uh, Jurassic Park. That was a Fathom event? I believe it was. Because I went to, like, when they re-released that in 3D. That was just a regular movie release. I don't think it was 3D. Yeah. It was Greg's birthday. Okay. We went. No, I'll probably just watch that when it hits HBO down the road. It's taken me a long time to convince her to watch The Penguin with me. So let me work on that first before I go ask her to cry for during a Christopher Reeve documentary. Since you like the transparent Xbox drills, have you seen the Extreme Rates transparent shells? No. For what? Uh, for Xbox, I've seen their Switch shells. You just get those on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. Yeah, I've seen that for, yeah. for Switch. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because I've seen that yeah. shit. I have a transparent shell for the Steam Deck that is extreme rate. Yeah. Uh, that's on the one that is broken. Yeah. That will broke. <laughs> Somehow. Xbox controller shells? I did not see. Yeah. I mean, yeah, extreme rate makes shells for like everything yeah they're pretty so, cheap they're yeah. not like that great but yeah but like you got to do it yourself they're, they're cheap 
shell swapping a controller is not a big deal, especially a pro controller. That's yeah. super easy. A uh, Joy-Con kind of sucks. It's kind of a pain in the ass. All right. Uh, I think that's everything. Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Audible.com, YouTube Podcasts, no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with a placement on all of those respective platforms. I will hopefully have a video up on Thursday. It will be a more concise explanation of my thoughts on the Switch 2. Uh, I will also probably get these uh, Switch 2 shells in working order. They, they, they won't be much different than what you see here, though. Um, unfortunately, I don't have like a screen that is the size of right. what the Switch Two is going to be. It's smaller than what the Lenovo Legion Go would be, okay. like a little small. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but uh, hopefully that'll be up on Thursday. Uh, Macho Nacho will have a video up this week. Uh, he's doing a, a the Gotcha SP, and he's going to be using my little Flex PCB. So if you were interested in that, go watch that. Um, uh, that's it. And I think on Thursday, I'm going to try my best to play the new Zelda game. Oh, wait, I can't. Unless I go get it. And I don't want to. Hmm. That is, that's a real pickle. All right. Well, anyway, uh, everybody go watch AJ. He's streaming. Streaming that game everybody likes, Pokemon. <laughs> and we'll see you later. And hey, don't forget we're on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Nope.